Well, folks, it's time to look into the stock market, see what's going on. But before we do that, let's give Mr. Dan Burr his flowers. He told us that inflation had very likely to hit 3-4, and he told us that 3-5 was not impossible. And boy, I don't know about you, but I think he nailed it again. It was very interesting to watch the market reaction after. But uh, Mr. Bird, you were right, right again, again, man. It's uh, it's becoming a trend. Yeah, well, the last week we talked about why that was likely. So if anyone didn't see that video, just go back and watch it. And it's funny, I think one comment was, why are we still talking about inflation? Inflation's not going yeah. up. <laughs> well... Yeah, yeah, we've got a trend now. I mean, well, we talked. I, you know, I, I explained why I thought that last week, and yeah. basically happened pretty much like I thought. I still think June is really going to be scary. The June one, the, yeah, um, the May one, I'm not too worried about that one. We actually might get a little better reading in May, slightly bit, slightly better. The June one, I'm concerned about. No, I'm with you because if if we're still talking about inflation going up in June. Rates are going higher. Uh, I'll say that. And I'm I'm somebody who's kind of laughed at folks that said rates could go up. But let's just assume that the May reading is flat. So wait a minute. You laughed at me then? I did. I did. I think I <laughs> laughed. I think I did. I think I got video of me laughing and chuckling. <laughs> um, but, I, but I'm willing to eat crow and admit if we get a flat reading on CPI headline next month and then the next month is like a three, seven, I will eat crow. I will be, I will wear my swing in a mist shirt and say that inflation's a problem. And I'm with you. I think June's a scary number. I think right. June is scary. Yeah. And if we, if we get those things in addition to unemployment, not spiking, basically, yeah. you know, staying flat essentially. Yeah. I mean, I mean think about it. You get that's a, got every reason to, to be able to raise one more time. No, if we got a 3.7 CPI headline and we have unemployment below 4%, we are going higher. Right. Yes. Agreed. Yep. Good. We finally are on the same page. Well, there's a couple lots of ifs and ifs and ifs in there, but I but well, for there the are, first, of course, there always are. For the first time, I can I can see it. Because what you did last week was eye-opening to me because I just saw how bad June could be. Right. Right. If we're told if if inflation is still going like this in June, that's six months, folks. That is a trend and a half. Right. Yes. And the, that's right. And the Fed will if we get a hot reading in June, the Fed will whack us in June and may whack us in July. I mean, they it could be yeah. a problem. It could be. They it, historically they don't like to do anything after the conventions. So, you know, after August basically. No, that's but why. That that's doesn't why mean, June, that doesn't mean they won't. won't. They don't like to, but that doesn't mean they won't. True. Yeah. So they they don't want to be viewed as political. Yeah. Well, like, I thought was most interesting was the ten year notes reaction. Yeah. The ten year note. I think it's above four or five. I mean, it was a wild reaction by the ten year note. Yeah, ten year note went up, um, which affected the whole market really. But it affected financials in particular. We'll talk about that in the next session. We'll talk about the earnings that came in. Yeah. But um, want to see some charts? Yeah, please. I, I'd love to see some charts and maybe maybe just give us some color. Uh, obviously, I think you had Iran uh, send over 300 drones and missiles towards Israel. It appears that Israel was able to to knock all of all of them or most of them out of the sky. Um, mm -hmm. Is that going to have any? Ripple effect Monday morning or, or uh, I think it stuff? could it could it could Monday morning. I mean, I think we might have had you know a couple of days for the market to think about it, and it won't have any effect. But having said that, the market is looking for an excuse to go lower, mm -hmm. and it's start, already started, right? Which I'll, I'll talk about here in a second. Okay. And I and I talked about that in my newsletter this week too. As a matter of fact, so let me share. And you know, you know, normally with things like that. They affect the market initially, but wars in the long run don't. It's really earnings, as always, that affects the market. Yep. So there might be a temporary setback. So, so far, we're not seeing anything. We're just seeing your Zoom screen. Oh, okay. There, there we go. go. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. So if anybody would like the newsletter, just go to breakpointtrading.net. 
it's dot net not dot com and click on this little button right here to get the newsletter i'm going to actually do that and show you what i talked about this week um and if you want to be reminded that the newsletter is available all the way at the bottom there's a zero dollar subscription it basically just registers your email that's all it does it doesn't ask for a credit card or anything and we don't share emails so you should never get spam as a result of signing up here with your email um by the way investors business daily switched back to uptrend under pressure mm -hmm. they went to uh uptrend continues or something like that for two days last week and then very quickly switch back to uptrend under pressure which i thought was interesting mm -hmm. okay so let's um Let's go to the newsletter first, because there's something, there's a topic that's pretty important in this conversation. It's right there, actually. So here's the newsletter. You just click on that button and it brings this up. Um, this is last week's economic calendar. So you can see CPI went yep. 3.5, forecast was 3.4. PPI came in pretty flat, though. Yep. PPI was fairly tame. Next week's kind of a quiet week. Yeah, next week for me, uh, I counted, I think I counted 11 Fed speeches. It's all about the Fed speeches right. next week. Yeah, yeah. Now that they've had their meeting, they can start talking. Yep. It'll be interesting to see what they say, actually. So here's what I want to talk about first. Let me make this bigger. This is a market cycle, mm -hmm. stages of the market. Um, I went to the money show in Miami this weekend, on Friday, actually and met with John Carter, who is somebody that I really respect. He's got a great book about the market. He's the guy that said there's three stages to a trader. Stage one, lose all your money. Stage two, stop losing all your money. Hmm. Stage three, start making money. Yep. Um, and he talked about this too, and and I, I'm glad he did because it reminded me of this market cycle. But this is what how markets typically work. And this is any market. This is not just the stock market. If if uh, houses could be traded, this is what they would look like too. So initially there's accumulation at the bottom and then everyone starts buying. And there, everybody jumps in and it goes up and down. It doesn't go straight up, it's up and down. And then it gets to a point where it starts to go sideways. So that's the distribution phase. So you've got accumulation down here, then you've got the markup, the uptrend. Then you have the distribution phase. So it takes time for big investment houses to distribute their positions. Mm -hmm. And while they're doing that, retail traders usually are saying, oh, I'm gonna buy the dip, BTFD, buy the mm -hmm. dip. Yeah. Goes back up, comes back down, goes back up, goes up and down. That's the That's the big investment companies distributing or selling shares over time because they can't do it all at once as the retail traders retail investors think that they're buying because this is going this will continue but it doesn't and then we start the downtrend phase and we get to stage five which is another accumulation phase and it starts all over again and that's just the way markets work so then I put this in context with the current market so this is the S and P. Mm, look at that the distribution. Yeah, that's the uptrend phase from back in March. This is the short term uptrend. So this is the March bottom. I mean, I'm sorry, the October bottom last year. And we've had this great run since October. And now, if, if you look at this, compare it to this, looks pretty similar, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yep. So okay. I think we're in the distribution phase and John Carter said this too. Now, if I look at, is the other image kind of to scale? Cause I agree distribution phase makes sense. It's uh, enlightening, um, but how do you know when it's near the end? Ah, good question. Mm -hmm. When you know that, and I actually talked about this in the newsletter, um, when you know it's near the end of the distribution phase, so the distribution phase will start creating these, these this support level basically. Okay. Where the the market's not really going lower than that, it's where 
usually retail traders will step back in and say, buy the dip, BTFD. Right. Right. And that's what you look for. You look for some kind of, and this is not a specific number. It's not a specific price point. Okay. It's just a generally a level. So it's a range it's somewhere in there where it looks like it's going to start kind of going sideways. And when it breaks through that, that's when it's open. Okay. Usually All right. So, we'll we, break, so we look for, through. Okay, got it. I mean, I, I can't tell you if this is weeks, months, right. days. But we look that. for some kind of basing or, or floor yes. and then when that's that right. is broken. Got it. So that's, that's the blue right. line. Okay, that's why it. I draw that. And that's why I drew that line. I see that, what you're doing. So that looks to me like this could be a support level. Now we have the 50 day right below it. So it's, you know, I think it's likely we're going to get down here a little bit lower. And then we'll see if it goes sideways or if that's if that's it for distribution and we just break through and we start lower. Okay. But that's what you look for right there. So Got during it. this distribution phase, you don't want to be adding new positions. You don't want to be buying new stuff. If you're a long-term investor, you just sit and hold. Mm -hmm. If you're a trader, whatever your time frame is, then you want to be aware of this and know that if if there's bounces and uptrends that they probably won't last. Right. Okay. Right. It's going to come back down. Now I did the same exercise with NVIDIA. Hmm. All right, so let's see what NVIDIA looks like. Oh. Does that look similar? A little bit, yeah. Yep. Accumulation phase, markup phase, and we could be right now in a distribution phase. Hmm. So we'll see. And for NVIDIA, the 50-day is down here at 820. It's basically right where my stop is. Was it 825, something like that? 825, yeah. 825 is where my stock is right now. All right. So basically that's what I that's what I am seeing. I think we may be in a distribution phase. I think it will, I don't know how long it will last, but I wouldn't be surprised to see it last through the summer. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised to see the the high that we made on on all the indexes will be the high until after the election. Got it. Okay. So we'll, we'll go sideways. We may go down. We may sell off. I don't think we'll sell off more than 3% or so. Mm. But that's 3% is very likely. And then we'll see. We'll see what happens. All um, right. This, so All the right. market timing strategy that I've talked about before, this is using the, the 2X leveraged. This is, um, and I... I posted to move to cash and I sent this out to all the annual members on my website to go to cash on the 19th. And now it's, these are starting to move to bear. You know, mm. Short term is now bear and usually goes next will be midterm will turn to bear. But right. this strategy is in cash right now. And then this is okay. the, this is the view that I put together taking in you know all these different components of the market indexes sectors industries commodities metals and currencies mm. and just looking at those every day and I update update this every day wow and every day draws this graph the orange line is the short term the gray line is the medium term the yellow line is the long term and that's how it normally works short term right. short term moves first then medium and then long term okay but you can you can pretty clearly see that we are starting a downtrend. Interestingly, some of the Magnificent Seven held up pretty well last week. Mm. You know, Apple, in fact, in particular, had a really nice bounce. Started to, mm -hmm. and Google too, both of these. And Apple has been, you know, not doing well at all. Tesla actually did fairly well too last week. Mm -hmm. So it, it seems to me like as the market is rolling over and heading lower, Mm -hmm. that some of the Magnificent Seven become the safe haven for people. Yeah, and it, it and again, I think Apple and Tesla of the Magnificent Seven have had the roughest year. Yes. So maybe, Correct. you know, it's kind of the dogs <laughs> of the Dow strategy. Take Yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. And you can see Meta and Netflix had a bad week last week. Microsoft yeah. was yep. okay, but hmm. so that was, NVIDIA is kind of hanging in there. We'll see. And video reports at the end of May. So 
lot of times they, you know, start to move up a couple of weeks before their earnings. Right. I actually asked John Carter about that because he likes he he trades uh, options and he likes trading these kind of stocks right here because hmm. they have big moves. Right. And I asked him and I said that about Nvidia. I said, you know, normally they move up about three weeks before earnings. He goes, yeah, that's true. They normally mm -hmm. do. He goes, I don't think they're going to this time. Yeah. But okay. I think the whole market is just sort of in a sideways movement. It's tired. Okay. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Market is tired. If right. we look at the the sectors, um, you can see even though the aggressive growth sectors were outperforming the S&P, you get technology, discretionary, and communication services, so were the defensive sectors. Hmm. Staples, utilities, they were also outperforming the S&P. And those are the ones that outperform normally when you know, the, the traders are moving into safety. So the fact that they're both outperforming actually, you know, gives me some encouragement that I think the market is going to come back. It probably will move sideways, but I don't think it's going to be a big crash or anything. Okay. So, and then of course the, uh, this fun one. <laughs> yeah. That's a great chart. Tells you the movement. Each of those yeah. dots is a day, right? Uh, this one here is on a 10 day oh, 10 period, days, sorry. 30 minutes. So this is a 10 day period, right? So each Got one it. of these is one day over 10 days. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each dot a day. Yep. Okay. Right. So you can see technology came down into weakening, but started to move back up. There's the NASDAQ energy, which had a, has been having a great run and just made a, almost basically a round trip. It made a big U-turn. Whoops. Right. Yep. Um, XLV, which is uh, healthcare, was actually doing really terrible, but it's starting to make a little recovery. Here's financials. We'll talk about that in more detail later. Okay. All right. So that's the market. Let's look at a couple of other things on the market that I thought were interesting. If I go here to charts and first, let's look at the VIX. Mm -hmm. Still a so teenager? VIX, what's that? I'm saying, is it still a teenager? I haven't seen the VIX oh. in a while. <laughs> The VIX actually went over 17 Friday. Oh, but still a teenager. All right. It's at 1731 right now. So normally, like this, this is what I put on the chart. If it goes over 17, if it's under 17, bulls are in control. Over 20, bears are in control. Right. It's getting into that sort of that no man's land. But it's trending yeah. up. I mean, you can see ever since back here in December, really, the lows of the VIX have been going higher and higher. That, that, yeah, I'd call that a trend. Okay. Yeah, I see it. So the VIX has been trending up, and you can see we hit the peak right here, and the market is sort of rolling over. Yeah, it'll be interesting if the VIX being up. It'll be interesting to see what the VIX does by the end of the day Monday. I think a lot of the move Friday was this warning that was all over the, frankly, all over the internet that uh, Iran was going to attack Israel, and obviously that has now happened, and, and near yeah. as we know, not not terrible. So maybe that'll settle we'll see down. what we'll see what happens. I mean that that probably will have some effect on Monday. However, I, I think the market wants an excuse to go down. Frankly, yeah. So I think they'll they may use that. Now they've had a couple of days, you know, since since the drone attack on mm -hmm. or yep. attempted attack on Saturday. So yep. the market's had a couple of days to think about it. And usually that's enough time for for it to say, well, it could be it could be an issue, but it doesn't look like it's a huge issue yet. Yeah, I, I was encouraged by the Israeli stock market, which is open on Sundays. Right. Um, I think it was basically flat when, when I checked it um, right. yesterday evening. Yeah, I, th I think Iran may have made a huge mistake by trying to do that. We'll yeah, I, I mean, you just never know. I th Yeah, I don't know. I'm yeah, not going to pretend to be. I'm not a Middle East know. expert. I'm not going to pretend to one, pretend to be one. Yeah, that's right. And in, in the context of the market, like I said, normally it may cause a sell-off short term, but in the long term, it's always earnings. Um, I had a conversation with somebody, had, had dinner with some friends, and he said, you know, the market just over the long term, the market just keeps going higher. You know, if, if you look at look over 30, 40, 50 years, the market goes up on average about 9% a year. So if you just put your money there and just leave it there, 
it should go higher and it should. Right. And I said, well, do, do you know why that is? He goes, not really. I don't really know why, but I know that's, that's a fact. I was, I said, well, the reason that it is, is because they keep replacing the stocks that are in the indexes. <laughs> if you take, if you just take the Dow by itself, mm -hmm. the Dow stocks that are in there today are not the same ones that were there 30 years ago right. <laughs> or even 20 years ago. So as stocks either, as companies either, either get acquired, you know, have bad earnings or, or a long period of bad earnings and then not performing other parts of the market, or other, other companies start to outperform. Mm -hmm. Then the Dow replaces those dogs of the Dow with ones right. that are performing better. Yeah. So of course the market should go higher. That's how it works. It's how the game's played. Way. Yeah. It's designed that way. That's the way That's it's true. supposed to go. So, yeah, and, and that will continue. They, they will continue to replace ones that don't perform and then we'll replace them with, with companies that do perform and the, it will just keep going higher. All right, so let's take a look at, um, so that was sentiment. Let's look at the McClellan oscillator, which I thought was really interesting too. I've been talking about this for a while. That. Yeah, so this is the advanced, this is a moving average of the advanced decline. This is for the New York Stock Exchange. And whenever it's over zero, that means there are more advancers than there are decliners. And when it's under zero, the opposite. So I've been saying for quite a while, as the market has been, been heading higher, the advancers are not participating. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is sort of a, a uh, negative divergence. Mm -hmm. So finally, it, it all cracked. Finally, it just... Yeah. Which say it gave... <laughs> yeah, that's a crack. Yeah. So finally, you know, finally did what I have been expecting it to do. And it's, it's given us fair warning. It's told us all through this period that this is probably going to happen. So it's not like this sell-off is something surprising, or it shouldn't be, at least to the ones listening to your channel. It shouldn't be surprising. Right. Yeah. Um, and the bullish percent index also has had a negative divergence, and now it's starting to Yeah, go down. the market's just tired. The market's... Yeah, the market is tired, right. Yeah. If you look at the um, breath analysis, these are the advanced decline lines. You can see... So this is the S&P up here. Here's the NASDAQ 100. Here's the NYSE. There's large caps, small, mid caps and small caps. Small caps is already broken lower. The other ones are getting ready to break through their 50 day moving average line. Got it. Again, and I, and I talked about this last week or the week before that I showed some of these things and I said, these are subtle. These are just beginning. I'm not saying that, you know, it's, it's on the verge of doing this, but it, these are subtle indicators. Right. Yep. Now they're not so subtle. No, no, they're not. That's not a subtle chart. No. Right. Here's the Keltner channels. These basically are uh, the ATR at average true range. Let me do a little closer in view of this you know, five month view. So the dark one in the middle is the one day, one average range. The right. next layer is two, two X average range, average daily mm -hmm. range. And then the light one in the bar reaches is 3x okay. and when it gets to 3x it's very extreme it right. usually does not stay there very long so we get to 3x here came back down to 1x went back up to three but not as high came back down to this is what i call the mean reversion mm -hmm. to the mean that's the 21 yep. day moving average i seen a reversion to the mean went below it went to the lower level of the one day average range and now we're on the verge of breaking the one day and it would not be surprising for the market. It would actually be normal for the market to continue down into this three X area. Hmm. Okay. Somewhere between 5,000 and 50, 50, let's call it, you know, somewhere about right around, right around 5,000, right about right. 5,000. Okay. So, and if you look at the momentum indicators down here, they're kind of telling you the same. If you look at the, this this uh, negative divergence has been on my chart since probably January. Mm -hmm. I've shown this over and over again. As the market keeps going higher, the momentum keeps keeps going lower, and yep. now the momentum is accelerating to the downside. So yeah, I think the cracked. target for this is somewhere around five thousand, which is about three percent. Okay, I like it. About a three percent drop. Um, 
And then weekly trend analysis is kind of interesting. So that the one I want to point you to is this blue one right here. This is money flow. Mm -hmm. And this is what I talked about a couple of weeks ago. And I said it was kind of subtle, but the, the one week money flow, which is the gray one, had already broken down right near the zero line. It still hasn't really gone through zero, actually. Mm. But the four week is now starting to roll over now as well. And then you get a long-term trend, a medium-term trend, and the short term is now bearish. Yeah, I see. So it. again, this kind of follows short, medium, long. It's kind of a series it goes through. Right. So this is kind of kind of confirming everything that I've said. The market is tired, it's rolling over, it's getting ready to, you know, probably we'll go down a little bit more. And um then we'll see what happens. There you go. Well, your your newsletter and your website is a wealth of information. Also, folks, Dan has an amazing playlist on this channel. You can go back and watch our past week conversations. Also has some education videos in there. You really need to check out his playlist because uh, we have receipts. Yes. Uh, Going back two years, over two years now. Yeah. By the so, way, for those that are subscribers on the newsletter, webinars and newsletters page, I actually put in Oh, look at I that. Do the, I do these Zoom meetings once a month with subscribers where folks can just ask me anything. I'll, I'll have to pick a topic, but we'll just have a conversation. Look at people you. People say, oh, take a look at Apple. Tell me about Tesla. What do you think about this? And we'll just look at charts and talk about charts. That's but amazing. I also put those education videos that I did with you. Oh, nice. In here as well. Part one, part two, and part three. So they're all here. And then the these, this is Tom Bowley did two education videos too. On nice. candlesticks and price and volume basics. And I added yeah. those in here. Hard to so believe you give that away for 99 bucks. Hard to believe. 99 bucks, right. A lot of for education. a year. <laughs> yeah, for a whole year. Nine there are people that charge 99 bucks for a month. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Pretty crazy. Well, Dan, you're amazing. I look forward to conversation number two about uh, earnings that started on Friday. Um, one more time, folks. Breakpointtrading.net. Yep. Get the newsletter. So newsletter is right here. Or you can sign up to, to be reminded. You don't need to sign up. You can get it if you just want to go here every week and click on this. But if you want a reminder it's available, then go down and sign up for the $0 there subscription. You go. Thanks, buddy. All right.